So, how prepared do you think you really are for a disaster? You may feel like you're ready, but according to a recent poll on ready.gov, less than 20% of the United States population feels very prepared for an emergency situation. That's really low, especially for those of us living in California where, in case you haven't noticed, this place is earthquake country. Me? Well, I'm just hauling around some supplies, you know, stuff that everyone has in their house, like a dozen cans of corned beef. I like corned beef, okay? Today, October 15th, marks the Great Shakeout, which is the world's largest earthquake drill meant to promote awareness and safety. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to make a video about how to prepare yourself for the big one. Yes, that is a proper noun, because when it comes, everyone's gonna know its name. Sorry, I'm not trying to scare you or anything like that. After all, there's no real immediate threat of earthquakes right now. Uh, but let me give you a little bit of context. The San Francisco Bay Area is built alongside two fault lines. There is the San Andreas Fault, notable for causing the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake and inspiring the extravagantly disastrous Dwayne Johnson vehicle of the same name. It's the quake's 31st anniversary this week, so happy birthday. And there's also the Hayward Fault, not quite as elegant of a name for a Hollywood blockbuster, but it's the one that might end up causing the most trouble for us. It runs dangerously close to a bunch of East Bay cities, including directly underneath the Greek Theater in Berkeley, but it doesn't matter if you're in San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, or anywhere else in between. If a major quake were to happen on either of these faults, they have the potential to demolish a good portion of the Bay Area. But I mean, we really don't need to worry about that. According to the USGS website, a major quake alongside the Hayward Fault only happens once every 150 years. So as long as the last one wasn't earlier than say, I don't know, 1868, we should be fine. So when was the last one anyway? Okay, so remember that thing that I said about the big one and that there's no immediate threat of earthquakes? Forget I said all that. Earthquakes are the only natural disaster that have zero warning whatsoever. You can't track them like a hurricane. We can't evacuate before it hits. It's just, hello, I am an earthquake. I am happening right now. Good luck. So like I was saying, you always want to be prepared for the big one. And the best way to do that is with an emergency kit. So this is the part of the video where I would have gone to FEMA's website, listed everything out that they recommend you have in your kit, and then try to mirror that in my own. Uh, but I got lucky, and that's because while researching for this video, I came across a company called Redfora, short for Ready For Anything. And they're a small company based right here in San Francisco, specializing in making emergency kits for this exact purpose. So I reached out to them and they were kind enough to send me their complete earthquake kit. Let's go see what's inside. And so they actually sent me their premier kit, which includes in this bag a few more high-end food options, but inside this is everything that you would ever need for an emergency. In addition to the emergency kits, they also offer free guides and information on how to prepare yourself. So basically they're like a one-stop shop for everything earthquake and disaster preparedness. They included in this kit an emergency plan, which is in my opinion just as important as the kit itself. And we'll get to this a little bit later. So what I'll do is I'll run through the kit, show you all the items that are included in this bag, and then give you some, uh, just some suggestions for things that you might want to include in addition to it. So obviously the first and most important thing probably uh, in this kit is water. If you're building this kit yourself, try to aim for one gallon per person per day. This kit is meant for one person for three days. And in this kit, they also give you a liter of emergency drinking water, which is completely purified. It will last apparently up to 20 years. But since water is heavy and it's kind of annoying to carry around, even though it's the most important thing on earth, they do give you some options. They also give you a life straw, which is a little purified drinking straw that allows you to, according to the picture on the bag, drink straight out of a stream if you really needed to. 
They also give you a pack of 10 purified drinking tablets, so if you do need to drink water out of a dubious source, these will help you do it safely. So with water, you're also going to want to have food to eat because you need to sustain yourself. You can't just drink water all the time. And so they give you in here, at least, the, what I assume is the premier kit offerings. They give you a little bit of freeze dry rice and beans. Not bad considering the default option in most of the kits, which is an emergency ration, probably suitable best for military people. Yes, according to this, it is uh, approved by the US Coast Guard. You know, this is not the thing that you really want to eat uh, on a daily basis, but it is 2400 calories. So this thing will get you through at least a couple of days. And so if you're following along at home and trying to build your own kit, I'd go with the more uh, non-perishable, high protein kinds of things like canned meats, like all that corned beef back there, beans, nut butters, trail mix, like those kinds of things. Obviously don't put any fruits or vegetables or anything that requires refrigeration in your bag because that's not going to last. So this next one is kind of important. This is a hand cranked radio and flashlight. And so these are great for when the city's on fire and the electricity's out and the only thing that you can do is listen to a radio to get updates on your situation. But again, if you're following at home, any sort of battery powered flashlight should work fine as well as any battery powered radio. Just make sure you have spares in your kit as well. Another important thing is a first aid kit, which I'm gonna assume that most people have in their home, whether or not they're preparing for an earthquake or not. Um, but it's important to have things like gauze, band-aids, antiseptics, um, you know, alcohol wipes, just the basic things that you'll need to treat minor scrapes, bruises, cuts, things like that. I'm not sure if this one is in every kit, but they also gave me a little LED headlamp, which uh, is useful for when you want to, you know, light somewhere but don't, like, don't or can't use your hands. Uh, something like this is pretty valuable. So here are a couple of safety thingies thingies. So here are a couple of safety uh, devices, if you will. Um, the first one is a whistle with a little lanyard. It's water resistant. These things will really help when you're, say, trapped in a crumbled building because of the earthquake and it just completely collapsed and you're inside. These things can save lives. And on the other hand, literally, is a light stick, which I assume is like a glow you know, just any sort of uh, generic glow stick. This thing can be used in place of a flashlight to help like illuminate your position, help guide people to you to, you know, save you. I feel like a lot of the objects I've been uh, detailing just now have been about how to not die in an earthquake by being trapped under stuff. But let's look at some of the more interesting things that they have in this kit, such as the 4-in-1 utensil kit. Now, I'm sure everyone knows my preference for tiny spoons, but this one is a, a normal size spoon as well as a fork, a knife, and a bottle opener. And they all fold in onto each other. And so it's nice and compact and ready for, uh, for use. But what good is a utensil set without anything to eat out of? Which is why you got a little uh, stainless steel cup right here. Pretty basic, you really don't need anything other than this, just something that will not break if you drop it uh, and then can hold hot, cold, whatever it is that you want to put in here. So you have the utensils, you have the vessel, and you also have the freeze-dried food. How are you going to cook it? With this, silly? This is a folding stove with fuel. Now I've never actually used one of these for like camping or anything like that, but they do look pretty convenient considering how small this is. This one comes with eight cubes of fuel which will burn for approximately 20 minutes and you also get a set of waterproof matches to light them. Um, so this is your little stove top right here. Super useful, super handy. This set actually might be my favorite of the bunch just because of the packaging, um, but here is the, the body warmer uh, set, if you will. Uh, first of which includes a uh, literal body warmer right here. So these are the kinds of things that has the, the chemical reaction on the inside in which you break it, shake it, and then it heats up. Um, so those can keep your hands warm if they're freezing or something like that. You really don't need to worry about that too much in San Francisco because, you know, it never gets too cold here. But these are always good to have just in case. Um, in addition to that, you get a little uh, emergency sleeping bag. Uh, which you can see right here, this guy is thrilled to be using it. 
I'm pretty sure you guys have seen these like space blankets where it's like super thin, super light, but it insulates the heat super well. And lastly, we have an emergency poncho, which in case it does ever rain in California, this could be useful. Also, maybe I'm just going crazy, but the person on the emergency poncho is the same guy as on the, the space blanket, maybe? In any case, these things are great and they'll keep you warm. It is getting kind of hard to talk about every single object in here. Um, so that's why I'm kind of kind of bundle things together, which you can do with a rope as well as some duct tape right here. Um, you know, just general uh, hardware type things that you could find many, many different purposes for. I mean, duct tape you can use for pretty much anything. Um, and then this rope, who knows what you'll need to tie together. It's just super useful to have these kinds of things. There's also a small pocket knife, pretty basic. You know, it's got some blades, got scissors, got screwdriver, corkscrew, things you would find on pretty much any basic uh, Swiss Army knife. And also this one surprised me, but there's a little uh, tailoring kit right here that comes with this. Keeping your clothes and other fabrics together is I'm sure important for a lot of people. So it's good to have one of these just in case. Also included is an emergency tube tent, which if you are caught outside and it's raining, cold, uh, this thing can be a lifesaver. Some goggles here. A little, a little cloudy, might need to, to wash them out a bit. I probably should do that before putting them on my face. Also gloves in case you need to handle materials that would otherwise damage or harm yourself. Oils, raw meats, uh, you know, things like that. Wow, these actually, these actually kind of fit me. You know, my fingers are really long, skinny witch fingers, but yeah, not a bad fit. All right, we're winding down to the last few things here. Um, a little bit more leisure items here. Um, we have a, a set of survival playing cards. It says that these cards were created to provide helpful information should you find yourself in an emergency situation. And so it looks like every single suit here has a different type of category for your information. So diamonds are emergency signals, navigation, and getting help. Spades are food, water, edible stuff. Um, hearts are obviously first aid, CPR, choking, how to save people from the elements. And clubs are shelter, knots, and starting a fire. Surprisingly, they found a dual purpose for these uh, little playing cards here. And then, you know, little memo book right here. Uh, it's always good to have pencil and paper because, you know, you're not always going to have your phone out with you to take notes. Hello. Okay, my hands are getting sweaty. So this set of items right here I'm going to show you are about hygiene. Um, first off, wrapped in this little uh, little face towel right here. This is a comb, a razor, toothbrush, soap, wipes, toothpick. Basically everything that you need in a bathroom set. Uh, just sort of shrunken down to a two to three day supply. Also in this kit, they give you a few pads for feminine hygiene, a set of pocket tissue right here, and a, uh, a biohazard bag. This is where all your waste goes uh, because you're not just gonna take a dump in the middle of the street, right? You're not an animal. And finally, nothing too interesting. <laughs> we have a set of a uh, little medication, you know, aspirin, non-aspirin apparently, uh, but it was ibuprofen, burn cream, things like that. Uh, a set of AAA batteries right here. A regular straw, not a life straw. Um, this is just a regular, it's like a bendy straw unless it's completely broken. And a set of uh, a few masks because as we all know nowadays, these are just as important as anything else in this kit. So that's everything that's in this kit, inside the Red Fora kit. But that's not everything that you're probably going to need. There will always be things that you find that are important to you and that you'd want to bring along in case of an emergency. And so I feel the same way and I'm going to go through a couple of things that I think are important for me and hopefully will be important for you. So let's take a look. And so for my items, I'm going to start off with a power bank because when basically every person on earth has their own portable device, this thing can save lives. When you're stranded and you need to contact someone or you need to send anything digitally, the ability to, to charge your phone when the electricity is out is a godsend. And this is not just for phones either. This is for everything that you can power with a USB port. So something like a fan, 
a, a light, a radio, this thing is an absolute essential for me. Uh, if you're gonna get one, try to find one that's above 10,000 milliamps in capacity uh, and try to keep it charged uh, before you just sock it away. Okay, this one has a risk of sounding a little bit morbid, um, but I'm gonna recommend that you bring some recent photos of your family alongside your kit. Yes, I know your phone has all the photos you could ever need, but I like keeping some of these physical copies around um, for a couple of reasons. So one, let's say an earthquake does happen. Let's say you get separated from the rest of your family and you need to, to contact them somehow. Physical photos will help you identify them. And not only that, they'll help you in creating copies. It's, it's much easier to make a copy of a physical photo than to try and find a printer to connect to a phone to send it, email it, you know, stuff like that is a little bit tougher, especially once an earthquake does happen and everyone isn't necessarily relying on digital stuff in order to spread word of somebody that's missing. I know that nobody ever wants to think about not being able to locate their family, but this is only gonna help you in the long run. And the second reason is that if you do need to evacuate and spend time away from your home, it's always good to have a couple of, a couple of keepsakes with you. Like to me, holding an actual photo is a million times better than looking at it on the phone. And so the third thing I would recommend for everyone to pack in their kit, even if you don't read, is to bring a book. Uh, preferably one that you enjoy and that you can read over and over if the situation calls for it. I don't read a whole lot of books, but something like, you know, Super Mario World Secrets, I, I, I will enjoy reading this one over and over, even if I can't play the game. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh, I'm gonna keep this one around. And so for the last thing I'll recommend that you throw into your kit, even though it's not tangible in any form, is a plan. Have a plan. This is something that this bag or any emergency kit that you buy will not help you with. It's invaluable to know where to go, what to do, and how to act calmly and accordingly so nothing bad happens. This little pamphlet that they threw in is actually really great because it has emergency contacts on the back. It has spaces where you can write down all these you know, things about information about your house, about where to go. Um, but you can also get this on their website for free so you can make your own plan. So there you have it. That's everything that you could possibly need minus some corned beef cans all in one bag. And like anything disaster related, the best thing that you can hope for is that this, this kit, this bag stays in mint condition. I know it's kind of weird to own something without the hopes of ever actually using it, but think of it kind of like a toilet plunger. Like you know you should have one, you know that you never want to use it, but if you are caught without it, then you're gonna be in real deep. Now I get that not everybody is immediately willing to shell out a hundred, two hundred dollars for a kit like this, and that's completely understandable. Like times are tough, money is tight, especially when you're spending it all on lunch and meat. But in California, in our state, which is prone to earthquakes and apparently now wildfires, the most important thing is that you are prepared. Now, if you're on a budget, you can still download the guide to build your own kit for free. So if you want to, you can do that down in the description below. I'll leave a link. But if you do happen to have some extra spending money lying around, uh, these kits are great because they're kind of a set it and forget it type of thing. Hopefully you don't forget it long enough so that you don't remember where you put it. Uh, most likely you'd wanna put this somewhere that's immediately accessible where you can just grab it and go. By the way, did I mention that this video is not sponsored in any way? No? I honestly just wanted to make this video for a while since the Loma Prieta earthquake uh, anniversary was coming up. And I know that everyone gets kind of weird around this time of year just because of all the, the quote, earthquake weather. Earthquake weather. Red4 was simply gracious enough to send me this kit to, to check out. So go visit their website, buy this kit if you want to be prepared. Don't buy this kit and make your own if you want to be prepared. Just don't make me repeat myself. Be prepared. If you found this video useful and are now more prepared than ever for an earthquake or any other kind of emergency, you know, this is not just earthquakes. This is for everyone out there, uh, leave a like down below or subscribe. You know, it's an easy way to support my channel and help me bring you more videos just like this. So thanks for watching, be prepared, be safe, and I'll see you at the next spot.